All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem calculating shear stress, the maximum shear stress due to torsion. And in this problem, we are gonna be given a solid circular shaft that has a diameter of 50 millimeters and a shear module. Oh, we don't need the shear module of elasticity to calculate stress. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is find the maximum shear stress. And let's go ahead and draw the shear stress distribution at that location. And here's what the thing looks like. Here's the schematic. And this rod is one and a half meters long. So I have this solid circular shaft here and it's got a distributed load for one meter of its length right here. And it's a uniformly distributed torque of two kilonewton meters per meter. And that means there's two kilonewton meters of torsion for at every meter of this, of this shaft. And then here I have concentrated torques applied here at this, we'll call this 0.25 meters and 0.25 meters. And right here, I have a concentrated torque of one kilonewton meter applied right there where that little red dot is, and then a 0.5 kilonewton meter applied right there where that other red dot is. And so now I wanna find out what the maximum shear stress is, and that's gonna involve me using the torsion formula. And the approach would be one to calculate support reactions. We have to find out where the maximum internal torque is happening along the length of the rod. And so it might help to actually draw an internal torque diagram in this case, because I have a distributed load. And once I identify where the maximum internal torque occurs, then I can calculate my shear stress using the torsion formula, this tau equals T rho over J. Yes, and then last but not least, we can probably, if we know what location that is, we can draw that shear stress distribution on the cross section. All right, all right. So let's go ahead and do the first thing. Let's calculate these support reactions uh, for this. Uh, notice the diameter of this solid circular shaft is 50 millimeters, so no big deal here. So, you know, I only got one fixed end here on the left, and so I need that support reaction. So I'm gonna use this schematic, which will really be my FBD, and I can use that to calculate my support reaction. So if I call this end point A, and I'll call this location B, we'll call this end A, and here, here at end A, I would imagine I'm gonna have a support reaction. I don't know what direction that support reaction is, that supporting torque reaction. So I'll just guess to the right and I'll call this TA and I'm gonna apply to, apply equilibrium equations to get that support reaction. And so I can just sum torque, sum of all torques is equal to zero. I'm gonna say a positive torque is a double headed arrow pointing to the right, which means my right thumb is pointing to the right and anything curling in the direction of the fingers is a positive torque. So based on my drawing here, if I go left to right, TA is a positive torque. And then the resultant of this distributed torque right here is to the left. So this would be minus the arrow area of this rectangle right here, which would be minus a base times a height. So we're talking two kilonewton meter per meter times one meter plus one kilonewton meter plus 0.5 kilonewton meter equals zero. And then if I go ahead and I sum all this, my torque reaction at A is positive 0.5 kilonewton meters. And this positive just means that the direction that I drew it is correct. All right, all right. So now we're ready to determine the internal loads. And so to do that, I'll draw one more free body gram. All right, so here's my free body diagram with the support reaction at A drawn in. In order to determine the internal loads, I gotta figure out where do I need to cut? I wanna cut and essentially draw the left or right side of that cut or the free body diagram and then apply equilibrium equations to determine the internal load. Now the hard part is to identify where you need to cut. And so in order to identify the cut, really what you need to do is identify discontinuities, which are beginnings and ends of distributed loads, support reactions. So in this case, our discontinuities are here at a support reaction 
which is just a concentrated this location at a is a also a discontinuity because i have a beginning of a distributed load here i have the end of distributed load so that's going to serve as a discontinuity here i have a concentrated torque that's going to be a discontinuity here another concentrated torque a lot of textbooks actually label the locations of discontinuities with letters so here just keeping with that theme i've got here b this is c and this is d and what we're going to do is identify these cuts and these cuts are between discontinuities so in this case i'm going to have to make a cut i'll say here between cut one cut two cut three so in this case i have a, B, C, D, I have four discontinuities and I'll need to make three cuts. I'll number these, cut one, cut two, and cut three. And it's just good to number these cuts because eventually they lead to coordinate systems. And so I'll show you, for example, when we have a distributed load here, it's a good idea uh, when you cut within a distributed load to include a coordinate system. And in this coordinate system, you wanna choose an origin at a discontinuity. And when in doubt, just go left to right. So in this case, right here, I'll choose point A as the origin of my coordinate system for cut number one, and I will call this X1. So when X1 is zero, I'm talking about point A here. And when X1 is one meter, I'm talking about point B here. And so if I look at cut one, X1 has a range from zero to one meter or from discontinuity to discontinuity. All right, all right, so good. Now I have this cut, so let's go ahead and take a look. Let me look at cut one. I can choose either the left or the right side of that cut to draw the free body diagram. So in this case, I'll choose the left side of the cut. And so here's cut one and I will have, here's the face of the cut, a positive internal torque. I assume, I'm assuming a positive internal torque to start with, and this is gonna go away from the face of the cut. I could label this TAB because it's within segment AB, and I've got a uniformly distributed load here, which has an intensity of two kilonewton meter per meter. This length from the origin to the cut, I'm going to call that X1. And so now this is my free body diagram. I am trying to solve for this internal load TAB. And so here I'm going to apply my equilibrium equation and that will just be sum of the torques. I'm going to assume positive to the right is equal to zero. And in this case, going left to right, I would have 0.5 kilonewton meters minus the area of this region right there, which would be two kilonewton meter per meter times X1 plus TAB equal to zero. If I solve for TAB, the internal torque in segment AB, this would be two kilonewtons. I'm going to just cancel out the meters. The X1 has units of meter, so I should have the correct units when I'm done or I start plugging numbers in. Minus 0.5 kilonewton meters. All right. And what this tells me is that within segment AB here, my internal torque is a linear equation or linear function. And so it varies linearly from A to B. Yay is internal torque at AB. And then I can go ahead and do this for cuts two and three. And really what I'm doing when I make a cut at two is I'm just cutting here and then I'm essentially taking this side of the free body diagram. And so I'm just redrawing that and the loading in that case, I have point, I have the 0.5 kilonewtons here, concentrated force, kilonewton meters. And then I have the one kilonewton meter here and the cut in two is between BC. So I could label this internal torque. I assume a positive internal torque, which is away from the cut. And this would be TBC. And again, now I apply my global equilibrium equation. So sum of the torques equal to zero. I'm gonna say positive, a positive torque is to the right. And here this would be negative TBC plus one kilonewton meter plus 0.5 kilonewton meter equal to zero. And TBC in this case would be 1.5 kilonewton meters. And then for cut three, I, I just go ahead and repeat the same process. And cut three is just represented by this, uh, this circle right here, that portion right there, which is between 
C and D or discontinuity C and D. And so my free body diagram, again, if I choose the right side of that free cut, and in this case, the only load that I need to consider is that 0.5 kilonewton meter and the internal torque here, TCD, and by equilibrium tells me that the internal torque in segment CD is 0.5 kilonewton meters. And you can notice that I didn't use a coordinate system for cuts two and three. And the reason is, is because all the external loads here are just concentrated torques in between the discontinuities. I don't have a distributed load of any kind that would cause some sort of variation in the internal torque as I go from B to C or from C to D. And so really, it's a constant. My internal torque between B and C is constant. And even if I were to use a um, a coordinate system, let's say, for this cut, I would still get that the internal torque is a constant of 1.5 kilonewton meter. So basically what that means is if I cut it anywhere between those two discontinuities, B and C, I would still get an internal torque of 1.5 kilonewton meters. So now I can go ahead and draw an internal torque diagram because I have an equation that describes the internal torque in segment AB. I know that the internal torque in BC is 1.5 kilonewton meters and it's constant. And in segment CD, it's also constant. It has an internal torque of 0.5 kilonewton meters. And so let's go ahead and draw that internal torque diagram. So one, two, three, four, full show. You know what I'm saying? And here, I like to draw the free body diagram again. Drawing is good. And so I will draw. Here is the rod. At the support on the left, I have a concentrated torque here. That support reaction was 0.5 kilonewton meters. I have a uniformly distributed torque for one meter of two kilonewton meter per meter. And I, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that internal torque diagram. And one thing I like to do is draw vertical lines at the discontinuities, boom, like this. And I know that basically within the between discontinuities, you know, my function is different. And so this would be my internal torque in units of kilonewton meter. And to start off, well, I, I could look at a couple things. I could look here and I could say, what well, if I made a little cut right here just before the distributed load started and I looked at the inside of that, I know that on the inside, because of this concentrated support reaction, which is going to the right on the outside, this external load or external support reaction of 0.5 kilonewton meters, if I were to cut just before the distributed load in between, I would get a negative 0.5 kilonewton meter. Or, I could look at the equation over here and this location right here is when x1 is 0 and I, when I put x1 is 0 here I would get that the internal torque is negative 0.5 kilonewton meters so that means I start my drawing here at negative 0.5 kilonewton meters I know it's varying linearly and at let's see x1 is from 0 to 1 meter so 1 meter away when I put a 1 in here I'll get 2 minus 0.5 and that'll give me at 1 meter 1.5 kilonewton meters and so here at one meter I should expect I have an internal torque here of 1.5 kilonewton meters and we know it's a linear equation and so here yes like this and if you can imagine this this line if you can look this line has a slope of 2 kilonewton meter per meter right because this is one meter and it's a change of two meters over one meter so that slope is the same as the intensity of the distributed load ao and this is just like drawing you know it's analogous to drawing a shear diagram on a on a beam then if we look at segment right here this next segment so this was segment ab if i look at bc and in BC, I have a concentrated torque positive of 1.5 kilonewton meters. And so that means going across, I just boom, straight across 1.5 kilonewton meters right here. And then I have a concentrated torque here, but in the segment CD, I go down to 0.5 kilonewton meters, which will be, and this is my internal torque diagram. And you can tell from here that the maximum internal torque, the maximum internal torque is over the entire length of the the rod the maximum internal torque happens in bc and it's 1.5 kilonewton meters so max from that diagram i know max internal torque and so now all i gotta do is calculate the maximum shear stress so this is now a straight plug and chug you know what i'm saying it just it just plug and chug and tau max is t max times rho 
over j. And in my in this in this shaft, if I look at a cross section of the shaft, it's a circle. Oh yeah, that looks circular. You know what I'm saying? That's a circle right there, son. And this right here, this thing has a diameter of 50 millimeters. So that means here. And when we're talking about torsion, my maximum stress occurs on the outer radius. And so here, in this case, my maximum torque was 1.5 kilonewton meters. And then my maximum radius, so that's the distance from the center to the, to the outer radius, is 25 millimeters. And then I've got to calculate the polar moment of inertia of a solid circular shaft, which is pi over 2 times radius to the fourth. And let's see, I got to make sure my units work. I have kilonewton meters here. So I'm going to convert that meters into millimeters. So 1000 millimeters per meter. Boom. And now I just straight plug and chug and this in using your fancy schmancy calculator. This is going to be 0 0.0611 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And a ki one kilonewton per millimeter squared is very convenient because one kilonewton per millimeter squared is one gigapascal. And so this is 0 0.0611 gigapascals, which, and then if I multiply it by a thousand, this will give me megapascals, which is 61.1 megapascals. Yes. And last but not least, to draw the shear stress distribution on the face of the cut here, what we're dealing with is, in this location, we're dealing with a positive internal torque. A positive internal torque is going away from the cut. And so in this case, if I'm looking at the face of the cut here, that torque is going like this, 1.5 kilonewton meters acting counterclockwise in this case. And so if I want to draw a shear stress distribution on a radial line, so if I choose a line right here, boom, like this, that means this point right here, this point experiences stress of 61.1 megapascals. And the shear stress varies linearly from zero at the center of the shaft where the radius is zero, so the shear would be ze the shear stress would be zero to the outer radius. So in this case, this is my shear stress distribution along this line right here. And so if I wanted the shear stress distribution along this line right here, my distribution would look like this. At this outer radius, I would have 61.1 megapascals varying linearly to zero. Boom, boom. Boom, and this intensity right here at that point is 61.1 megapascals. And you know, if you want to challenge yourself, draw, go for it and draw the shear stress distribution on this radial line right here. Pause, draw, you know what I'm saying? All right, and then here, this would look like, if you paused it and you drew it, congratulations, boom, right here. Yes, 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 okay. And so the most common mistake I see people doing is that like they might try to draw the shear stress distribution along this radial line when they do that and they'll draw the lines like like this, which makes, you know, it's not it's not correct. Don't do that. You wanna draw the, er the stress arrows perpendicular to the line that you are, you know, drawing from. So every point along this line has a shear stress pointing to the left. Every point on this line of the, every point of the material on this line has a shear stress that's 90 degrees to that line right here. And then same here, every point on this black line has a shear stress that's pointing straight up. All right, so hopefully that was a useful video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. You know what I'm saying? Love structure free. Take it easy. Structure free.